Previously, we discussed about the very basics of JavaScript, how we can declare a variable and what kind of what type of uh, variables are available and data types as well. In this video, we will discuss about the JavaScript functions and how we can declare a JavaScript function, how we can use it, how parameters behave inside the function and so on. So let's see how we work with the JavaScript functions. As you know that we use a function or declare a function when we perform a specific or particular task and uh, for that for that specific task we create a function and uh, all the code of that task is inside that function in javascript when we create a function we just need to declare a function with the function keyword so uh, it's a keyword that tells uh, the interpreter that i am going to create a function and in javascript there is no return type of function and uh, similarly when we pass the parameters we don't define any type and even we don't use the var uh, variable declaration uh, keyword for the parameters and definitely it depends that uh, if you want to have a return type with a function you just return something otherwise you don't return anything and all the arguments that are inside the function they behave as a local variables so this is the syntax uh, for the javascript for declaring the function you might get confused that uh, i have seen a different syntax for the javascript functions you might have seen that es6 uh, arrow function style so this function style is a uh, typical javascript or we call it vanilla javascript style function we will discuss in this video that how we can declare es6 javascript functions uh, or we can call it uh, arrow functions behavior of javascript functions is quite different as compared to modern languages if we talk about java c c++ or even c sharp let's look at this code and uh, you need to tell me that what would be the output of this javascript uh, in modern languages actually it's an error because uh, a function declaration with the same name is not possible and uh, similarly if we are calling this function we will not come to this point because the same function name is not possible uh, either we overload the function by changing the number of parameters or we can overload the function by changing the type of arguments but in this case this func is not taking any argument and two func identical functions are actually declared Let's look at the another example. In this example, we see that uh, both functions are identical and taking single argument. And if even we skip the second declaration, we would have an error over here that we cannot call or this function does not exist, which does not take any uh, does not take any argument. So without argument, the func does not exist. Similarly, if we look at this example. Uh, in uh, modern languages, we can overload with uh, changing the number of parameters, and this is possible. We will not have this error. But we would, we would have an error over here that this func with no argument does not exist. Similarly, in this one, uh, we are calling this func with a single argument, and the expected output would be the function one. So it will uh, print the function one on console. So this is what we expect if, uh, if we are uh, moving from modern languages uh, to JavaScript. Similarly, in this example, uh, we are passing two arguments over here and we are expecting that this function would be called and it would return the function too. But it's very interesting that JavaScript will actually ignore the first declaration of the functions. So if the same function with the same name or even different arguments, like in this case, uh, they are actually two functions the same is same name is used which means we are actually overloading function over here but unfortunately in javascript it will call the second function always so in all the examples uh, example code over here the output would be the function 2 because javascript interpreter will ignore the first declaration and will would always consider the latest declaration of the function and would always call the latest function or you see that in this case it will call this one even with the single, single argument it will call this one and now the question is what will happen with the arguments if we have declared a function with the which is taking multiple arguments and we are calling the function it is also said that there is no error in any of the code which means that if you have declared a function with multiple arguments we can call that function with no arguments with uh, the arguments number of arguments which are actually defined when declaring the function and we can call that function with several arguments now we have learned the behavior of JavaScript function and I guess we can easily tell the output of uh, these JavaScript code snippets. So in this case, uh, there are two different functions, func and func2. 
and definitely in this case when we call the func function one is will be called because they are there are two different function names in this case uh, we are calling func2 again if we talk about the modern languages that would be an error because func2 does not exist which takes no arguments but in javascript it's possible that if we have declared a function with a single argument or multiple arguments we can call that function to the function name so javascript actually looks for the function name finds the function name and when it matches it actually calls that function even with no argument similarly in this case uh, we are calling func2 and this is the func2 which is declared we are calling this func2 with single argument which means that this first argument would be received over here and local variable of this function inside inside a in this case uh, we are calling func2 with two parameters because this function is declared with two, uh, two parameters and we are calling with two parameters and that's the best fit that a would have the value 5 and b would have the value 10 and this would actually not use this a and b and would return the function 2 in this case we have again the identical functions with the same function name which is func one is with the one argument and one is with the second argument and if we are expecting that this func with the single argument would be called with this call of the function we are wrong because javascript will always consider the recent declaration of the function so it will call this func which will uh, take one argument and that argument would be passed to this function and would be stored in a so that would be our expected output in this case that way it would return function 2 now the question is that what will happen that if we have declared a function which takes several arguments but we call that function with zero argument or one argument in this case this is a function named uh, multiply which takes two arguments and we are calling this function with the uh, one argument or even we can call this function with zero arguments this is possible in javascript so this is um, uh, a good practice in javascript that uh, we can check the uh, these variables or the arguments that if they are undefined uh, or not depending upon that if they are uh, undefined because uh, once we declare a variable and which has not initialized with any value so that variable is undefined so we, with, with the help of type of uh, we can check the type of a so if no value has been assigned that would be containing the value undefined so we can check this is undefined and if uh, in this case in this algorithm of multiply it's actually checking that if uh, if they have uh, zero uh, it's uh, a is undefined and b is undefined as well in this case it's uh, assigning a default value so this is a one way of uh, assigning the default value in vanilla javascript that we check the undefined in ES6, uh, there is a possibility that instead of checking that either they are uh, defined or not, we can uh, initialize those variables if parameters are actually not passed while calling the function, it will assign the default value. So in uh, ES6 standard, we can, uh, when we are declaring the parameters, we can assign the initial value uh, over here. So in this case, if, uh, if multiply with no argument would be passed, it will uh, take the default values and uh, if it is called with the single argument so this single argument would be stored in a or will be received in a and uh, there is no second argument in this call so in this case uh, b would have the default value and in this case uh, it's taking two arguments and we are passing two arguments it would be received over here and definitely it would multiply and then result would be 25. let's write some javascript code so i'm going to create a function called uh, sum and if I create another function with the same name, we see that what kind of behavior we will get over there. So if I call sum with no argument, so let's return some hard coded value. I will copy this one and in this case I will return 20. So if I call this sum, so result is 20. So it will ignore the first declaration. And even if I change the arguments, let's say for example this sum takes one argument, this one, this sum takes two arguments and uh, if i call sum one thing is that this i can call the sum function with no arguments although it's taking uh, two arguments in one there is no function that exists with zero arguments or even if we can create one which takes zero arguments so this one is with zero argument this is with the one argument so we say 10 20 and 30 and if i call the sum function we are expecting that this is call this one but unfortunately in javascript it will not call this one it will call the function with the recent declaration 
So which means that with the same name, functions are not possible in JavaScript. And also, if we create with the multiple arguments, uh, it, it does not matter. It will always call this one. So if I pass some arguments, 10 and 10, uh, these arguments would be received inside this uh, function in a and b and I can let's for example return a plus b so if I run this I should get the result 20 because I'm passing over here and if I pass or call this function with one argument in this case first argument would be received in a and b would be actually undefined so when we do the operation with, the, with some number with an undefined we get not a number Right. So in this case, uh, traditional way for doing uh, in vanilla JavaScript is that we check that if any value because it's a possibility that user will can call this function with no arguments or with multiple arguments. So in this case, we can check that if uh, type of a is actually undefined or not. Right. So if it's not undefined and this undefined would be as a string in quotes. So if uh, it's not undefined, it's good. We are using parent operator and making the decision. It's good. We can return the value as it is and be stored in A. Otherwise, we say that it's zero value. And similarly, we can do this for the B as well. And we can just say that for the B, it would be zero as well. So if I call this sum with zero argument, so it will return zero. And if I call this uh, one argument, let's say for example, uh, some value, which is 34. That would be received in a and a plus zero would be the same value and if i add some more value let's say for example 34 plus 2 in this case it would assign uh, the b value to the b variable because it's not undefined so we will get the expected result there is also one thing that what would happen let's say for example i can call this function with uh, multiple arguments and that is really a possibility in uh, javascript so I can call this some function with several arguments, but we are receiving only two arguments. Let's say for example, if I run this, it will be received over here and 34 and 2 are actually receiving over here. But what would happen with these arguments? How can I receive these arguments? Maybe I want to create a generic function and in that function, I may allow that any number of arguments can be passed inside this function. So how I can work around with these arguments and how I can get these arguments Let's see how we can do this. All the arguments that we pass in JavaScript function, they are actually maintained in array-like object, which is called arguments. So arguments ob object actually receives, and with the help of arguments object, we actually can retrieve all the arguments which are passed inside a function. So in this example, there is a myconcat function taking one argument. And we can call this myconcat with the several arguments over here. And first argument, is actually we are using separator for this one although all the arguments would be received in arguments object so it's not actually array which means that all the array functions are not possible to apply on this argument although we can copy this uh, arguments array elements from uh, this uh, array like object into an array and then we can perform array operations if we want but initially in arguments uh, object we have length property and we can use the indexer uh, because it's array like so we can use the indexer style to retrieve the elements in this example we are actually achieving that we are actually separating all the strings which are passed in this function and this function will actually use the separator which is the first argument and will continue uh, in the from the second index of the array length and will continue to add them in the result with the help of separator so it will keep separating and uh, will result output like this in this case comma semicolon and the dot there is another possibility that in javascript uh, we can receive the arguments in the rest parameters other than arguments array so rest parameters are actually they are actually array and uh, other parameters would be received in ours so in this case uh, we are passing the pan arguments and uh, we would have the args dot length which would be um, the length of the from the first to the nine which is actually the nine arguments and the first argument would be received in args unlike arguments because in arguments array or the arguments object all the arguments would be received in that but in the rest parameters wherever we define the rest parameters 
it would be received over there in the address parameter array. Similarly, in this example, we are not declaring this function with uh, any parameter, but we are using rest parameter style over here, which means that all the arguments would be received in this rest parameters. And we can iterate through from the first element to the last element, and we can receive and retrieve all the parameters which are passed uh, through the function call. And all the parameters would be inside nums. So let's see how we can do this practically in JavaScript. Let's back to the previous example we were working on. So we were sending the parameters over here. So let's see that what we get in arguments. So arguments is actually available over here. So I can see the length of the arguments. So we are passing, let's say for example, initially I'm passing two arguments over here. So if I run this, so the length is two, which means all the arguments are received in arguments not length, right? And uh, how about if I use the rest parameters? So let's make, uh, let's differentiate between, which for example, if I'm passing nums, So nums has two length and if I have two arguments and also I have rest parameters over here. So let's see how much length we got over here. So the length is zero, which means that all the other parameters or the rest of the parameters would be received in nums. So these arguments would be received in nums rest parameter array. So four arguments, these four arguments are received in nums, right? So let's get back to the arguments again. So we discussed that argument is array like, which means that we can iterate through the arguments, but it's not actually the array, which means that it has the length property and we can iterate through, through the indexer. And uh, we can do that, which means that we need to use uh, a for loop and with the help of for, we can actually do that and then we can iterate through the arguments array and then get the elements from there. So I'm using console.log and retrieving the arguments from the array. So I can use the backtick so that I can write something. Let's say for example, argument number So the first argument is 34 and the second argument is 34 because I'm using zero. So I need to use index over here. So 34 and two, and if I pass other arguments as well, let's for example, 11, 22, 33. So we have all these arguments, 11, 22, 33, 44 in the arguments array over here. So that's how we can iterate through and the, get the elements. And this is where I'm actually uh, printing out all the arguments and it's over here. And uh, I can work with that. And similarly, if I talk about and want to receive uh, with the, let's say for example, I say sum two with the three dots, nums, I can uh, call this sum two over here and I need to change the function name because uh, I cannot actually overload the function. So let's console dot log nums. So it has the array and uh, all the elements are over there and I can iterate through and I can also have um, these uh, array functions. I can apply all the array functions such as I can apply the map functions on this and also I can use the for each loop on this uh, array and I can console.log all the elements 
So all the elements are received in elements. So I can also use for each. But in this in this case, I cannot use for each because uh, again arguments is array like object, but it's not an array. So that's the difference between the rest parameters. And again, if I want to receive, let's say for example, the function by default behaves by adding the two elements. And if you pass the rest of the parameters, the function will actually add up all the elements uh, of uh, the arguments. So initially, if I want to say that I want to create some function which will add two values. So these two values would be received in A and B. And the other parameters would be received in nums. Whenever we talk about the function parameters, this is always the discussion that either the parameters are or the values are the pass by value or the pass by reference. So let's talk about, about the JavaScript. So JavaScript is passed by value for primitive data, which means numbers, strings, and booleans. And uh, which means that only the values would be passed and would create a copy inside the function in a local variable and would not affect the global scope or the data that we pass uh, originally. So in this example, let's say for example, we're calling a sum function with the two parameters and we have declared a variable over here with the number value 10. And if we, if we change that, if we modify that inside, which is received in N1, so this A would be passed over here, would be received in N1. If we modify that, we return N1. Uh, it will not actually change that. It will not uh, do the modification of this original one. Similarly, with the string, string are also passed by value. Uh, which means that if we pass this string over here in the inside this string fun and if uh, it's received in p1 and we overwrite or we change this p1 so this p1 would uh, have its own scope which is a local scope and this uh, the original value would not not change so what are actually passed by reference in javascript so objects are actually the passed by reference in uh, javascript which means that if we pass the javascript object and if we modify that javascript object inside the JavaScript function, it will actually modify the original one. So it will not create a copy, right? So in this case, let's say for example, if we are passing this uh, JavaScript object having single key value pair, uh, this would be received in P1. And if we access the value uh, parameter of uh, this object and we change that, it will actually override this one, which means that the objects are reference type. Here is another example. In this example, we are passing the key value pairs, two key value pairs, single JavaScript object. So it would be received over here. And if we change this with the value and the index over here and we update that, so the original one would be modified. And also in uh, JavaScript, if we remember, arrays are also objects, which means that if we pass the arrays and we modify, it would be modified inside JavaScript function. So let's see how we can do this. So this was our uh, code previously. One thing is that we are receiving undefined because we are doing console.log and this function is not returning anything. That's why it's undefined. And if I just remove this and uh, inside this function call, we're actually doing the console.log. So undefined would be text over here. So let's talk about the pass by value and the pass by reference. So I will just uh, clean the code uh, a bit. So I will just uh, remove this one and this one too and uh, let's talk about the uh, simple values that we are passing so the primitive type are actually passed by reference so which means that if the pass by value so if i change one thing will happen so if i let's say for example pass a variable let's say for example let's make it x and y so that we don't get confused and if we say that it's received in A and I update this A and if I do console.log and get the value of A sorry A is not defined it's X so this X is passing over here like this and then we are actually updating so nothing happened over here so uh, if I make this an uh, array let's for example this is an array and uh, we are receiving this array over here and uh, let's update the zero index of this array with this one and see what we get over here see that x is actually having 11 uh, as a element on the uh, first index and we were passing or initially x was having an array with one element having value 34 so if we pass this over here and we change that it will be updated 
Similarly, if we do this with the Y, so if I make an, uh, a JavaScript object, so let's say for example, I say val is 10, and I receive this in uh, uh, sending this Y and received in B, and if I say that B dot val is um, instead of 10, we say that it's one. And if I console dot log X and console dot log Y, So you see that its value is updated with the one. So if I console.log before calling sum2, and I can say that call before call by reference. And this one is after call by reference. So before we were sending 34 in array and uh, we were sending 10 uh, after array. So there was some trouble uh, when printing. It was printing only the before call by reference. So I just added an empty string in, in the end. Now we see that before call by reference, we have uh, X uh, JavaScript object having array and second JavaScript, uh, this is an array and uh, this one is a JavaScript object. And we modified that when we call and uh, the original one, this X and Y, which is array and object, they are actually modified. So uh, JavaScript is uh, passed by reference for the objects. And in this case, we have JavaScript object and we have array. So both of them are the objects in JavaScript. We can also create a function with the help of function expression. So with the help of uh, function expression, when we create a function, functions are actually anonymous and uh, the reference is actually stored inside a variable. In this case, it's a uh, const, but it's not necessary to be a const. So const is good so that we cannot actually, or the developer cannot overwrite uh, this variable. Uh, in this statement, you see that this function is declared without a function name. And uh, we can create such anonymous functions and uh, the reference is actually uh, stored in square. So we actually call this square function and we can pass the arguments to this square and uh, all the arguments would be received inside the arguments or the parameters inside this function and uh, that can be several function parameters as we discussed earlier however we can actually also provide the uh, name with the function expression like in this case we have a function which is actually the anonymous function but uh, in this case it's a it's a kind of recursive function uh, in this case it want to call itself and uh, we can actually give a name and but we when we are calling this function uh, the factorial function uh, we are calling with the factorial name not with the fact because fact would not be available and we cannot call it because uh, that is the anonymous function and uh, the use of fact is only inside its uh, body or the declaration and we can call this function with the parameters and that would be received over here so point of understanding this uh, function expression is the arrow functions so arrow functions are actually introduced in uh, ES6 and they are actually too much used in React JS and React Native. And basically they are almost entirely based on arrow functions. So let's look at the arrow function that how the arrow functions are different than, than the normal functions. So in the normal function, when we create the anonymous function, as we just discussed, that the function reference can be stored inside a variable. So in arrow function, we can actually replace this function keyword and the parenthesis with the parenthesis and the arrow sign, which is equal operator and the greater than operator. So with the help of this expression, we can create the arrow function, which is the syntax of ES6. So it actually gets shorter and uh, has only one statement. One important and interesting thing is that it's not necessary to have the curly braces around the arrow function if arrow function has the single statement. And by default, if an arrow function has a single statement, it by default return that statement. So without having the return keyword, uh, arrow function can return a value. So in this case, if I do console.talk, hello, this is the function name. And when I call this function, it will actually return this string and that string would be printed on console. To pass the parameters to the arrow function, uh, we can pass just like in a function in a parenthesis. Uh, 
and these parameters would be received and we can pass on to the body of this function. If you have only one parameter, you don't need to have uh, parentheses. We can skip the parentheses for the single uh, argument or the single parameter. For multiple parameters, definitely we need to have the parentheses and we can separate that with the comma just like a uh, normal tradition when in the JavaScript functions. Let's convert this function into the arrow function. Before doing that, I will convert into the anonymous function. So let's call it sum and I will also update over here. So in this case, it's uh, this sum is actually the constant variable and uh, is holding this anonymous function. So whatever we pass this, uh, the, the parameters will be received in this uh, anonymous function. So uh, now let's convert into the arrow function. For the arrow function, I just need to replace this one, this function statement. And uh, in this case, actually, I need to just remove this because uh, in other ways, let's say for example, this is my function, which is the anonymous function. So I need to remove this and add the arrow. So this is my uh, arrow function. In this case, we already have the parentheses. I just need to remove this and then I need to add these arrows. So it will become the arrow function over here. Let's talk about the uh, output. So by default, it returns some value. Let's say for example, if an expression or the string. So if I call this fun as a function, by default, it will return a value. Uh, there is no return statement and you see. And if I have like multiple statements over here, uh, let's say for example, I have some uh, variables and uh, with that, I definitely need to return this. Let's say for example, var x is some value. So in this case, I need to uh, use the return statement and uh, after that it will actually return. But if I'm having the single statement, I can uh, use that. And if even, uh, let's say for example, I'm passing two values and I can say that So it's n a n, not a number. And the reason is that I'm not calling this uh, with some value. So it's uh, performing the arithmetic operation between two undefined values. So by default, it will return the statement for the, for the single statement, for the single expression. And if I add another expression, that would be an uh, error. And uh, to do that, I need to make the function body over here. So the knowledge that you have gained for the arrow functions, uh, I guess you can now tell me that what would be the expected output for these arrow function expressions. So in this case, or this JavaScript code, we have arrow function mult. We are calling this with two values and the expression is, or oh, looks really good. And in this arrow function uh, expression, we are actually checking if A is uh, defined or not. In this example, we are actually uh, checking that if they are defined or not, and we are actually creating a block. So in this example of JavaScript code, actually it's an error. I just explained that when we have multiple statements, uh, we cannot put without the curly braces. So we need to add curly braces to fix this error. So what, what would be the output of uh, this arrow function? So we are calling this arrow function with two parameters and the pair of function declaration is with zero parameters. So the answer is that A and B actually it does not exist. They are undefined. In this case, we are actually returning and again we have the same issue that two and three, they are actually not defined. In this case, we are actually defining these variables. So if we call two and three, the result would be zero into one, which is zero. So whatever values we are passing, we are not receiving over here. To fix this, we need to convert this function that would be receiving these two values. And in this case, two and three would be passed over here and the result would be six. So we have an error over here because uh, arrow function body, we should have the body with the curly braces. Why? Because we have multiple statements. For the single statement, we don't need to have the curly braces. In this case, A and B, they are not defined. So they are not defined as a const, let, or the var. And definitely we are not returning anything. 
and even if we add the return statement we are not defining anything in this case we are defining anything but we are not receiving anything over here so whatever we pass uh, it will not actually multiply in this case we are actually receiving the arguments over here another thing is that in arrow function the arguments object which is an array like object which is used to receive all the arguments uh, it's not available in es6 arrow function it's available in vanilla javascript so if we say that let's say for example i am calling this one with uh, several arguments and if i check for the console.log just like vanilla javascript function the arguments array so let's say for example length so it's not available actually so even i don't need to see the length so the arguments object actually it doesn't exist and it gives you something very strange thing over here so this is not possible actually this is not possible the arguments so we actually what we need to do is what's the solution for this if we are creating a function with the several parameters we can use the rest parameters params so with the with the help of rest parameters we can achieve the behavior of arguments object and all the parameters in this case would be received in params and you or you know that if we have let's say for example some uh, predefined arguments let's say two arguments they would be received in a and b and other parameters would be received in params just like vanilla javascript functions so we have params so rest parameter is the solution or the alternate to the arguments and that is available and we can use with the esx arrow functions so that's all about the uh, arrow functions and uh, and this we know that the syntax of the arrow function and then how we can use that so it's important to learn and practice the arrow functions because they are very much used in uh, uh, react native and uh, react js